Hello and welcome. It is actually motherfucking Sunday. going to do today. First off, we're going to acknowledge that today is Cinco de Mayo. So happy Cinco de Mayo to all of you. And also to those of you uh, living in the past or just acknowledging that yesterday was May the 4th. Happy May the 4th. May the 4th be with you as well to all you Star Wars fans out there. Um, for today, what we're going to do is look at something kind of brand new. Uh, I just, I couldn't help myself. And I really got to say the guys at Native Instruments are really just knocking it out of the park in terms of these new things that they're coming out with, these new synthesizers, these new blocks, you know, all this stuff. It's, uh, it's really something. cool stuff. And what this is called is the Super 8. And we can click to display the credits. So all of these wonderful individuals were responsible for creating this beautiful instrument. And, um, you know, I did a little bit of research. At, I don't know. I guess what I could compare it to is something similar to the Jupiter in the in the Roland territory. You know, it's a dual oscillator synth combo oscillator, and it has a ton of presets. But if you start out just on the initial, you'll kind of get a real feel for what just the basics of this thing sounds like. So here's oscillator one. You know, these are your oscillator waveform types. So you have your sine, your sawtooth, uh, pulse, and sub, and you can actually flip-flop between sub and noise on this fourth channel. So this just depends on what you want. And you just slide in. You just slide in and out the uh, volumes here to adjust the sound. So already, just within that one oscillator, really cool sound. And then it's a dual oscillator, so you mix between the two oscillators. So on the second oscillator, we could say on this one, I want a noise. Maybe I just want a tiny bit. Just a little bit of color. And what you can also do is you can you can route the modulation circuits down here. So this is your uh, like LFOs, and you can route these to uh, the oscillators here to change and sort of morph the waveform. And you get the visual feedback of what it's doing to the waveform. So it, it gives you an idea of what you know, the, the waveform should be, you know, how it would be responding. And then, of course, just mixing between these two, definitely, definitely cool stuff. And then here's your filter section, simple, you know, frequency resonance, right? So I'm actually going to MIDI learn that to a different, I'll MIDI learn that to the resonance. <laughs> Wow. 
And here's a character switch. For all intents and purposes, I think this is, uh, yeah, drive. So this kind of graphic here resembles like the uh, <clears throat> the reactor drive block and just gives it gives it some character. And then I could control with uh, the envelope, you know, how much the filter envelope impacts this. So that's how, like on that previous preset, so I think that's a circuits preset. Yeah, like right here in the base. The base is the first section, the first embedded section of presets. Uh, so yeah, in the circuits preset you had, and the, I'm still on the initial, I haven't saved anything yet. So this is just the initial patch and I've already created some stuff. But you have that initial kind of punch if you want to punch that frequency on the uh, filter upward. You just, you know, hit the... You can adjust how much you want this. So you don't have to do any routing to get the filter envelope to the filter. The filter envelope's already routed to the filter, and this is how you control it right here. And here's velocity. Specifies how note velocity will affect the cutoff frequency as well. So I could punch it if that was nothing and it was just velocity, say, doing this. Then I could punch it. Hold on, it's turned to zero. Let's turn it up a little bit. And then let's turn the frequency down. So now it's just, you know, the frequency's down. And this is where if I were playing it closer to, you know, where it actually is in uh, the normal filter setting, um, this is how it would sound. But since I just punched the key, you know, it gives it that uh, velocity response. So response to the velocity, that's cool. I like the filter envelope being, I mean, that's, a, that's just a badass. That's a badass thing to do. cool like you know like almost like a pulse all right so then uh, fm for um oscillator 2 modulates the filter cutoff using the output of oscillator 2 as a modulation source and then uh this can apply modulation to the filter either from the mod 1 or mod 2 source And that's your LFO. That's just your LFOs down here. So mod one and mod two. And here's your waveform types. LFO being just low frequency oscillator. It's meant to be like a sine wave or a sawtooth or a pulse or a try or something that you would never hear. You know, like nothing like, you know, unless you're a giant. <laughs> you have fucking you have ears the size of fucking Volkswagens. You know what I mean? You wouldn't be able to hear that. So it's just a wub, wub, wub. and what you can do is you can control the speed. You control the speed of that LFO with this control here. So this is in hertz, it's frequency, so how fast it's moving, how fast the waveform is moving. It's either real slow or it's real fast. Right, so right now it's real slow and then it's real fast. So I'm actually gonna MIDI learn that as well. Because I fucking love that. And that's what I, I mean, hooking the LFO to the filter is just badass. Again, I haven't saved shit. <laughs> this is the initial patch. You know what I mean? And I'm giddy like a child because this is a badass synth. It's really cool. It's cool stuff. So those are the oscillators. That's the filter section. Here's the amp, and this is the overall volume. Now I'll explain this other stuff in just a minute because it's super badass, but let me finish going through this. Then here's your filter envelope. We know what that does. So you can control how quickly the filter will respond to um, the envelope of the notes being triggered on the keyboard, right? Uh, then the amp envelope. So how quickly the amplifier will amplify everything uh, based on this. So if I slow down the attack, you get that slow ramp up in volume, that slow ramp up in amplitude, volume, it's the same thing. Uh, like a quick, 
have some decay in there, add some sustain or some release, then I would, that would then allow it to kind of That would then allow it to kind of fade off, you know what I mean? So that it basically, um, so that it it doesn't it doesn't have a sharp uh, decay in volume. It doesn't have a sharp drop off in volume. You know, it just like fades out in volume and amplitude over time. So um, yeah, I like you know a little bit of sustain in here. Kind of this setting we started out with is fairly cool. Like a little bit of a little bit of release, you know, and then <clears throat> modulation routing, badass. So click to select destination to modulate any of the above controls. Any of the above controls. Start by clicking here, and then select what you want. So say I want to modulate the mix, and I want to modulate the oscillator mix with the mod wheel. Then what I would do is I would select the source of what's going to go into, now I've selected that, it's the modulator mix, and I'm going to use the mod wheel to modulate it. So now, the mod wheel can control the modulator mix. Oops, what's happening? It's not working. So you set the depth as well. So how much you want this control that you're adjusting to adjust that control up there. So I'm going to set it just to 100. And it can go that way, right? And then set that to, and it can maybe go the other way. No? No, nah, just one direction. So maybe if we started, yeah, that's the move. So start it on one side, not in the middle. Start it all the way at like negative 100. And then if you wanted, uh, you would just have one source going to the, the control, but then, you know, the, the zero point of that control and then the 100% point of that control, it can go all the way through the rotation of that control. That's what you want, so... Another thing that would be cool would be mod one, right? And what the depth of that might be. So I think that would be cool too. So it's also doing the filter. So what if I turn the filter off for now, just so we could hear its effect on the oscillator? Just adds like this vibration to it, you know. So there's also another. Um, you could use a different source as well. So we got mod one and mod two. So keep that shit in mind. Um, but damn it, this is really cool, right? Cool shit. And we have effects. Chorus, flanger, and delay. So 
So yeah, just having fun like a kid on the delay. There's a flanger and a chorus as well. So those are your effects choices. That's separated from the reverb, so you can use you know one of those types of effects as well as the reverb. Or you could turn effects off, say I want no effects. Totally dry. Maybe I want to run effects in my DAW or whatever I wanted to do, you know? So that's cool too, you know? That is cool too. So... As I said, there's an absolute ton of presets. And one of the cooler, one of the really cool aspects about, I'm going to just switch to this preset to, to talk about this. So this preset circuits, it's the second preset in the base menu. But it's a cool kind of just sort of basic tone that you could use for pulses or something for like a dub or techno thing. And, you know, it starts out with kind of a cool pulse. And then if you modulate the filter, um, you know, it can, it can also, um, you know, it can kind of extend the decay, you know what I mean? Like it, ex it keeps, it can, it can kind of keep the note going for a lot longer than when you have the filter kind of tucked down. So this is cool preset and another really, I imagine this is why they call it Super 8. And this is, you know, again, kind of similar to the Jupiter uh, family, if I'm not mistaken, um, is the ability to use multiple voices. And once you go over four, it switches it automatically to a mono. So that's something to keep in mind. But it basically, from what I can tell, select the number of voices to be stacked in unison mode. When five or more voices are selected, mono mode is automatically switched on. But just listen to the difference of this. This is where it kind of starts out. And then, basically, I hit this unison button and now two voices are being played. So automatically it sounds a little bit fatter. And then let's stack it up to like three. Again, a little bit fatter. Let's spread this a little bit. Make this like a little more of a cool, like a stereo thing going on. So that's three. Here's four. You know, again, it's kind of getting a little bit bigger, a little bit headier each time. You know what I mean? Like, it's just really badass, really badass that you can do this this way. So all the way up to eight. And the eight is, for me, where it's at. So I kind of have to turn this down a little bit now because now it's a little bit a little bit loud just to kind of keep the volumes under control in whatever DAW you're using but this to me is one of the cooler one of the more badass features of of this synth because it just it it fattens the whole thing up and makes it just super super badass so i'm going to actually do again a map of the um, mod wheel to the mix.
then you get your standard like mono or poly. Can't do that in eight voice mode, but and you get your glide controls, you have pitch, drift, so it adds randomized detuning to the oscillators to emulate tuning and variability. Bad timing wise for freehand, but anyway, I wanted to get the idea of the kind of the, 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 the hugeness, you know, the, just the massiveness this thing can get to. It's really, really badass and sounds, sounds cool. Sounds to me like vintage. It's the perfect thing for me to, cause I've been wanting to fuck around here with like eighties synths, you know, like I want to get like, I want to get those like Duran Duran and fucking, you know, <laughs> Culture Club and like, you know, Depeche Mode and like all those vibes, you know, The Cure. Like, I want to get some of those. Echo and the Bunnymen, you know, like, I want to explore some of those sounds. And this is really something you could dig into, you know, along with the Monarch and the, some of the other things. But this is something special. And uh, I'm going to keep, I'm going to keep dicking around. That's for sure, you know. So. On that note, until next time.